in part three we determined the function of any triangular slice which is drawn perpendicular to the diameter of the cylinder uh, with respect to x which is some distance away from the center of the base of the cylinder. The final step is to calculate the volume of water in the cylinder. And recall that we have a tilted glass cylinder such that water fills up to half the base and touches the bottom top lip of the cylinder. And our method for calculating the volume of water in the cylinder is to draw some triangular slices that are perpendicular to the diameter line of, of the cylinder. And if we add up the areas of these very thin slices drawn from here to here, we will get the volume of water in the cylinder. So our volume is the limit of all the sums of the areas of the triangular slices as the number of slices gets really big. Or, another way of saying this is, as the thickness of the triangular slices gets really small. And so in calculus terms, we can write this as follows. The volume will equal the integral from a to b, where we'll say far left is a, the far right is b of the diameter of the cylinder, of the area function with respect to x. Now we can see from our diagram that any line drawn from the center here to the outside of the cylinder, there or there or there, is the distance r. So a can actually be written as minus r. And b could be written as positive r. So our formula becomes the integral from minus r to positive r. Another thing we can notice is that our volume of water is symmetrical about the y-axis. So we can simplify the calculation a little bit by saying that the volume will be twice the integral from 0 to r ax dx. All right, let's go ahead and finish this problem by substituting our area function into our volume formula and solving the integral. So we would get, let me move that up a little bit here. So our volume would equal twice the integral from 0 to r of h over 2r, r squared minus x squared dx. Now h over 2r is a constant, which I'm multiplying, so I can bring it outside the integral. And if I do that, I'd get v equals 2 times h over 2r, integral 0 to r of r squared minus x squared dx. And in this case here, the 2's would cancel out. And what I would get would be the volume is equal to h over r. And I'm integrating from 0 to r, so this would be, using the sum rule, r squared times x minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to r. Just as an aside to clarify the integral here of r squared and how we got the r squared times x, because r squared is a constant, what we really have there is x to the 0 initially. And so what we're doing is adding 1 to that exponent and dividing by 1 using the power rule. And what we end up with is r squared times x to the 1, or x. All right, so let's finish off by substituting r wherever we see an x and 0 whenever we see an x and subtracting them. And if we did that, we get the following. 
we get V equals H over R, R squared times R minus R cubed over 3, minus R squared times 0 minus 0 cubed over 3. This part here, of course, will go to 0. And so we're left with V equals H over R times R cubed minus R cubed over 3. The terms inside the brackets are like terms. So to subtract them, I need a common denominator. So this would be over 3, and I'd have to multiply the top by 3 as well. And so I'd end up with V equals H over R times 2R cubed over 3. And when I multiply this out, the R would cancel with one of the R's there. And so what you end up with is V equals 2 thirds R squared H. So what would the volume of water be in the tilted glass cylinder above here? If H was equal to 14 centimeters, say, and the diameter was equal to 5.2 centimeters. Well, we know the volume is equal to 2 thirds R squared H. So if the diameter is 5.2, the radius would be half that, or 2.6 centimeters. Substituting our values in, volume would be 2 thirds times 2.6 squared times 14. And when we work that all out, our volume would end up to be 63.1 centimeters cubed.